Going on a cruise is an ideal vacation where you can travel at the same time as meeting new people and enjoying exotic destinations. While you may think it's all fun and sunshine, there are some facts about cruising that you should know about. We've done some digging and found out some top secrets that cruise liners don't want you to know. Amazing! Number 10. Deaths A voyage is supposed to be relaxing and enjoyable. It gives you a fresh perspective and a chance to escape your daily troubles. However, death is inevitable and, of course, can occur anywhere, including on a cruise ship. This necessitates every cruise ship to contain a morgue on board for proper preservation of a body before getting to the next port of call. Death often occurs at sea due to natural causes like an unexpected heart attack, drowning, murder, or accidental causes. Nonetheless, death on a cruise ship is a rare occurrence and is rarely the liner's fault. Still, it's a little disturbing to think that dead bodies have been on or are currently aboard any ship you're sailing on. Any ghost you see may be the real thing. Number 9. Crews are often exploited Cruise ship crews often go above and beyond to ensure that you're comfortable and enjoying your voyage. Despite being your fairy godmothers on board, they aren't treated very well themselves. Most cruise liners employ their crew from low-income countries where labor laws are not well established and may not provide them with proper work permits. Some go a step further and confiscate their identification documents, make them work below deck all day, and pay abysmally low wages in developed country standards. Employment contracts can be harsh, and many seafarers will have to pay crewing agent fees, sometimes as much as $1,500 US dollars, just to join the ship. For the lowest paid, this will mean half of a typical eight-month contract will be spent just to cover this expense. Passengers only get to see front-end staff while most of the crew are out of sight, which means that despite their terrible pay, they also don't get tips. To be fair, cruise liners do offer delicious food to their crew, which is prepared by other crew members. They also get relatively high wages compared to opportunities available in their home countries. Not only that, liners offer long contacts that promise growth opportunities to crew members, with promotion opportunities, and once the crew is on land, they help them acquire houses. Number 8. Environmental and Health Hazards The cruise industry is the fastest growing sector of the travel industry, and this growing demand has led to bigger and better ships. Yes, this is healthy for economic growth and creation of jobs, but this creates a great amount of problems for the environment and your health. First off, your carbon footprint from cruising is extremely high, even more so per person than flying. One study by George Marshall of the Climate Outreach Information Network showed that traveling to New York from Southampton via the Queen Elizabeth II ship emits 7.6 times as much carbon per person as making the same journey by plane. Even more worrying is the fact that passengers on cruise ships are exposing themselves to dangerous levels of pollution. One undercover investigation by a C4 dispatchers team revealed that from the air on the deck next to the funnels on P&O Cruises ship Oceana, there are more than double the amount of ultra-fine particulates suspended in the air than found at London's Piccadilly Circus. Being exposed to these high levels of pollution can have adverse health effects even in the short term. Aside from the carbon emissions, the cruise industry has an even poorer record in terms of wastewater treatment. Cruise ships are a small portion of international marine activity but constitute 77% of marine pollution worldwide. A vessel with a capacity of 3,000 passengers produces 1 million gallons of gray water, 210,000 gallons of sewage stream, 150 gallons of hazardous waste, 8 to 10 tons of solid waste, and 250,000 gallons of oily bilge water during a one-week voyage. This garbage is enough to fill over 50 swimming pools. For an industry that claims to be environmentally friendly, this is cause for concern. This level of unregulated waste disposal poses a severe threat to human health, particularly in port cities. Number 7. Healthcare Sometimes we fall ill at most inopportune moments. Even if you're insured, medical services on cruise ships can cost a lot, and doctors are only equipped to handle smaller issues. In the event of a serious illness like a heart attack, the ship doctor can only stabilize you till the next port of call where you will be rushed to the nearest hospital. Most liners charge medical expenses to your onboard account, and then you'll have to claim reimbursement from insurance companies afterwards. In international waters, standard insurance cover may be inadequate, meaning the money will come out of your pocket. Not only that, disease breakouts can spread incredibly quickly if they're not contained straight away. For example, just last year, over 250 passengers on the Balmoral fell ill with norovirus, 
equating to 27% of all passengers. To be fair though, cruise liners have disease prevention measures in place like constant hand sanitizing and maintenance of high cleanliness standards. When required, they can also quarantine sick guests till the next port of call where they can get necessary medical attention. It will suck if you're the ill person on a cruise, but this procedure is essential to minimize breakouts. Number six, they don't play by the rules. Cruise ship casinos aren't subject to the same regulations as mainland casinos, given that they sell in international and different territorial waters. While in international waters, gambling laws are set by the nation under whose flag the ship sails. However, once they reach territorial waters, the rules change to those of the country whose waters the ship is in. Pretty straightforward, eh? Well, not quite, seeing as international waters become territorial if vessels sail within 12 miles of the coastline so ships will usually take advantage of this to give you worse odds. You'll often find casinos tweaking casino rules in their favor. Yes, the house always wins, but cruise ship casino rules give an added advantage to the house. The most common rule change is blackjack paying 6 to 5 instead of the customary 3 to 2. This rule change means a $5 bet would pay $6 instead of 7.5. You will often have to place large wagers of $25 plus to play the 3 to 2 blackjack. Video poker is another favorite which has meager payouts as well. Number 5. Crime Being on a cruise ship does not mean that you're entirely safe from crimes that occur on the mainland. You're basically on a traveling island with just as many people as a town would have, which means crimes are inevitable. Petty theft is one of the most commonly reported crimes, but more serious crimes also occur, like murder, sexual assault, and bomb threats. Crimes are usually reported to the closest port of call, but by then, crucial evidence may be destroyed and incidents at times get forgotten. Authorities at these ports of call are at times not equipped to deal with some cases, which means getting justice is a difficult process. In an effort to reduce crimes on cruise ships, passengers are educated on safety measures and there's a zero-tolerance policy on board. The ship also has trained security personnel on board to keep passengers safe so they can handle criminals before any port of call. In the event of a crime, Admiralty law comes into play when apprehending criminals and deciding the best ways to punish them. Number 4. Pirates When we hear the word pirate, our mind automatically drifts off to Captain Jack Sparrow and Blackbeard. But today's pirates are nothing like those rum-drinking scallywags. Today's pirates manifest themselves in the form of angry hooligans who bear dangerous weapons. Piracy only occurs in international waters where no nation bears any jurisdiction and mostly cargo ships are targeted. Cruise ships are also attacked, but it's a rare occurrence as only six incidents have been reported in more than 10 years, some of which are failed attempts. One such incident involved the ship Azamara Journey, which was approached by a couple of small boats. Yet, the crew and captain managed to evade them without anyone getting harmed. Despite piracy among cruise ships being rare, crew members are prepared for an attack and also have measures in place to prevent them. Ships always travel at night with lights off, save for a few mandatory lights and crew members have been properly trained to deal with such an event should it occur. Ships also have night vision devices and binoculars in order to detect crafts approaching the ship and international anti-pirate task forces patrol areas most prone to piracy. Number 3. Port calls are not guaranteed A port of call is included in a cruise's itinerary from which the ship stops so that passengers can visit the destination. Cruise liners can change the schedule at any time at the discretion of the captain, so there is no guarantee that the ship will stop at any port of call. To be fair, most cruise liner brochures include this fact, though it is mostly in fine print. The cruise line may refund the port tax in the event of a failed port call, but if the port call was due to events beyond the captain's control like bad weather, then you don't get a refund. Refunds are mostly in the form of cruise credit and they don't amount to much. Number 2. People Fall Overboard between 2000 and 2016, around 270 people fell overboard while cruising with an average of 20 people falling off ships in recent years. This number had doubled since the early 2000s when there was an average of just 10 overboard incidents annually. Most passengers are likely to fall off on the last day of a cruise and it often boils down to foul play, intoxication, climbing on railings, or jumping between balconies. However, it has happened for more sinister reasons, like when people have gotten to fight or been attacked. Such was the case with a Disney cruise worker who was reportedly thrown overboard after being assaulted in March of 2011. Although these cases are very rare, 
It's worth keeping your wits about you and screaming at the top of your lungs if you ever feel threatened like this because unfortunately, the chances of survival after falling from a cruise ship are tragically low, with an estimated 85-90% to 90 of cases resulting in death. Cruise ships have put measures in place to prevent this from happening though. The first is that guardrails are high and if a passenger does fall, several life ring buoys are thrown overboard to offer the person a floating device. A request is then sent to other ships within a 30-mile radius to aid in the search, and lifeboat rescue squads are tasked with finding the passenger. When it comes to surviving, determining factors will include the height of the fall, temperature of the water, weather conditions, and the response time of rescue crews. If God forbid you ever fall overboard, immediately scream for help, and then stay afloat without panicking or expending too much energy. Stay calm and positive. Before I reveal the most outrageous example in this list, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to Be Amazed. We upload amazing fact-filled videos every day, so don't miss out on learning some amazing new information. Also, hit that bell icon for notifications on more amazing fact-filled videos. Number 1. Cancellation Policies Cruises are booked in advance and at the time of booking you may be sure you made all necessary preparations. The future is always uncertain and something important may come up, requiring you to cancel your cruise. That's where the problems arise, because canceling a cruise is not free. Charges are dependent on how many days in advance you cancel your trip, but some cruises have a minimum cancellation charge. If you cancel too late, you may lose all your deposit and refunds are made in accordance to the terms of the cancellation policy, which may be a cash refund or future cruise credit. It's important to note that most cruise lines give you a period of 56 to 120 days to make cancellations, which is not always very accommodating. This video wasn't meant to scare you out of a vacation, but is merely meant to prepare you for what might happen on board. Cruising is a great way to enjoy new exotic places while meeting new people and making friends. Did you learn anything new about cruising? And will you consider these facts next time you book a cruise? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching.